Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on central gas supply. Pipe medical gas and vacuum system is a system where gases are delivered from central supply points to different sites in the hospital via special outlet valves. Supplied at a pressure of about 400 kPa, which equates to 4 bar, 58 psi, or 3000 mm mercury. Examples of gases supplied via this pipeline system includes oxygen, nitrous oxide, antonox, compressed air, and medical vacuum. They may be arranged in banks of cylinders, each of which should contain enough gas to supply a hospital for at least two days. Components Central supply points such as cylinder banks, liquid oxygen storage tank, etc. Pipe work Degradation by gases is avoided by using pipes made of special high-quality copper alloy, fittings made from brass, fittings are braced rather than soldered. Size of pipes differ according to the demand, 42 mm is usually used for leaving the manifold, 15 mm is used after repeated branching. Outlets are identified by gas color coding, gas name and shape. These outlets accept quick connect and disconnect probes or shrader sockets which contain indexing color specific for each gas or gas mixture. It is non-interchangeable and gas specific. Installation These outlets could be flush fitting units, surface fitting units, booms or pendants, or suspended on a hose and gang mounted. Non-interchangeable screw thread or nist is the British standard. Connection of the flexible color coded hoses from the gas outlets to the anesthetic machine uses NIST which is permanently fixed using a nut and liner union. It is gas specific and non-interchangeable. This picture shows color coded hoses with NIST fittings attached to an anesthetic machine. Isolating valves, also known as aerial valve service units or AVSU. Located behind brick glass covers, they are positioned at strategic points throughout the pipeline network. These are activated to isolate the gas supply to an area in cases of fire or other emergencies. Compressed medical air, clinical uses, oxygenation of patients using ventilators at 4 bar or to drive power tools such as bone drills at 7 bar. Safety features include the terminal outlet for 400 or 700 kPa are different to avoid misconnection. Medical air is filtered by filters, separators and dried before use to ensure it is clean and oil-free. Medical air should be dry, free from particulate matter which includes mineral oils used to lubricate the compressor and free from bacteria. Source of medical air Gas cylinder manifold or compressor plant plus duty and backup compressor. Safety features Low pressure alarms detects gas supply failure. Reserve bank of cylinders should be available should the primary supply fails. Schrader sockets and nist as mentioned. Color coding. Isolating valves as mentioned. The single hose test. Disconnect the nitrous oxide pipeline while retaining the oxygen pipeline. Open the oxygen flow control valve to note that oxygen is flowing. Further confirmation of oxygen can be done via oxygen analyzer. Open the nitrous oxide flow control valve which may show initial flows due to the residual nitrous oxide in the system that subsequently falls to zero. Connect the nitrous oxide pipeline to its wall outlet and note again there is flow in the nitrous oxide flow meter. These steps help detect accidental mix-up of oxygen and nitrous oxide pipeline connections. This connection of oxygen pipeline should result in both flow meters registering zero flows and activation of the oxygen fail-safe mechanism. Tap test. 
Connect the oxygen pipeline to the oxygen wall outlet using the Schrader quick coupler system. Correct coupling will not allow detachment of the pipeline from the Schrader coupler when a tug is given to the pipeline. Similar tests can be performed with the nitrous oxide pipeline with the nitrous oxide wall outlet. Regulations for PMGV Enforce these regulations for installation, repair and modifications. For example, regular inspection and replacement every 2-5 to five years of all medical gas hoses. Risk of fire from worn or damaged hoses occurs. Risk of rupture is greatest in oxygen hoses used with transport devices. Interdepartmental Responsibilities The anesthesiology department is responsible for the gases supplied from the terminal outlet through to the anesthetic machine. The pharmacy, supplies and engineering department share the responsibility for the gas pipelines behind the wall. Sources of gas supply Cylinder manifold Purpose it is used to supply gases such as nitrous oxide, antonox, and oxygen. Components include large cylinders such as size J with 6,800 liters capacity. These are divided into two equal groups, primary and secondary. The two groups alternate in supplying the pipelines. Number of cylinders depends on the expected demand. Non-return valves Primary and secondary groups of cylinders are connected through non-return valves to a common pipe. Pressure regulators located between the common pipe and the rest of the pipeline. Nitrous oxide is only available in cylinders. It has a larger manifold than the oxygen manifold. Mechanism of action. All cylinder valves are open for primary and secondary groups. This results in gas cylinders emptying simultaneously. Automatic change from the primary to the secondary cylinder group occurs when the primary group is nearly empty. A pressure-sensitive device detects when the cylinders are nearly empty and mediates the changeover. When a changeover occurs, an electrical signal is triggered to alert the staff to change the nearly empty cylinders. Safety features or practices Storage of cylinders These cylinders should be stored in a well-ventilated room, built of fireproof material, away from the main buildings of the hospital, the room should not be used as a general cylinder store. Empty cylinders should be removed immediately from the manifold room. Vacuum Insulated Evaporator It is the most economical way to store and supply oxygen. Components include a thermally insulated double wall steel tank with a layer of perlite in a vacuum. It employs the same principles of a thermos flask. Pressure regulator allows gas to enter the pipelines and maintain the pressure through the pipelines at about 4 bar. Safety pressure valve, it opens at 1700 kPa. If there is an excessive buildup of pressure within the vessel, this safety valve opens and allows gas to escape. Pressure build-up can occur when there is under-demand for oxygen. Control valve opens when there is excessive oxygen demand and allows liquid oxygen to evaporate by passing through superheaters. The superheater is made of uninsulated coils of copper tubing. Mechanism of action Liquid oxygen is stored at negative 150 to negative 170 degrees Celsius which is lower than oxygen's critical temperature of negative 118 degrees Celsius. Up to 1,500 liters of liquid oxygen can be stored at 7 to 10 bar. The low temperature of negative 150 to negative 170 degrees Celsius is maintained by a high vacuum shell. Evaporation of liquid oxygen consumes latent heat of vaporization which is taken from liquid oxygen and this cools the liquid oxygen. How is the remaining liquid oxygen in the storage vessel measured? It is measured by either a weighing balance or differential pressure gauge. The weighing balance lies below the storage vessel and measures the mass of the liquid. A differential pressure gauge 
measures the pressure difference between the bottom and top of the liquid. As liquid oxygen evaporates, its mass decreases and the decrease in pressure at the bottom of the storage vessel is detected. By measuring the difference in pressure, the contents of the VIE can be calculated. Hospital alarm system receives information from the weighing balance or differential pressure gauge to alert staff when liquid oxygen stores are depleted. Copper tubing coil Whole oxygen gas from the storage vessel is warmed here. Pressure increases as temperature increases. At 15 degrees Celsius and atmospheric pressure, liquid oxygen can give 842 times its volume as gas. Safety features and practices Reserve oxygen cylinder bank should be present in case of supply failure. VIE should be housed away from the main buildings of the hospital to reduce fire hazard. Avoid contact with spillage of cryogenic liquid oxygen to avert cold burns, frostbite and hypothermia. Oxygen concentrators Also known as pressure swing adsorption systems, extract oxygen from air by differential adsorption. These provide an alternative method of providing oxygen. Limitations include low flow rates of 4 liters per minute and low pressures of 70 kPa. Uses include for domiciliary supply for individual patients, oxygen supply for an anesthetic machine, and to supply oxygen for a medical gas pipeline system. These contains the zeolite molecular sieve. Zeolites are hydrated aluminium silicates of the alkaline earth metals in a powder or granular form. Zeolites act as an ion exchanger and molecular sieve arranged as many zeolite columns to form a large surface area. Mechanism of action Entrainment of ambient air Ambient air is filtered and pressurized to about 137 kPa by a compressor. The entrained ambient air is exposed to the zeolite molecular sieve column. The zeolite sieve selectively retains nitrogen and other unwanted components of air. The flow of air into the cylinders is directed so that nitrogen and water vapor are absorbed from one cylinder and then from another cylinder. Unwanted gases are released to the atmosphere after heating the zeolite column. The absorbed gas from the cylinder is extracted by a vacuum pump. Every 20 to 30 seconds, a solenoid valve switches the flow to ensure a constant flow of maximum concentration of oxygen of 95%, which is channeled to the oxygen reservoir. The remaining 5% is mainly argon, which appears to have no adverse effects. Although in higher concentrations, it has the same effect as xenon in stimulating erythropoietin release. Safety and maintenance. The lifespan of the zeolite crystal is at least 20,000 hours, about 10 years of use. Change the filters at regular intervals. Argon accumulation can occur in circle systems. Use higher fresh gas flows to avoid this. Centralized vacuum or suction system. Clinical uses include suction of patient airway secretions from endotracheal tube or tracheostomy, suction of bodily fluids during surgery, vacuum dressings, etc. Components include a pump or a power source, which generates a continuous negative pressure of negative 500 millimeters mercury, suction controller, filter, receiver or collection vessel, suction tubing, a suction nozzle or catheter. Measurement of efficiency. Negative pressure of 400 millimeters mercury or more should be maintained at the outlet. Each central pipe vacuum outlet should be able to withstand a flow of free air of 40 liters per minute or more. A unit should take 10 or less seconds to generate a vacuum of 500 millimeters mercury with a displacement of air of 25 liters per minute. Mechanism of action. Using the Venturi principle, electric motors or pneumatic driven pumps generate negative pressure. Suction controller is used to adjust the amount of vacuum generated. The suction controller has a variable orifice with a float assembly, backup filter, which prevent liquid from entering the system, and ports to connect 
to the collection vessel. Reservoir should have sufficient capacity to receive aspirated materials. If it is too large, the system will be cumbersome. A delay in generation of adequate negative pressure will occur. Suction tubing should be flexible, firm to prevent collapse, transparent to enable visualization of aspirated materials, has sufficient internal diameter and sufficient length. Bacterial filter removes 99.999% of bacteria and prevents entry to the system by fluids, condensate, smoke and infective organisms. Nozzle. Features to reduce tissue trauma includes a tapering and smooth end. Multiple holes is present so that if one is blocked, the other can continue suction. Minimum number of vacuum outlets should be two per operation theatre, one per anaesthetic room, one per recovery bed and one per ICU bed. These are my references. Thank you.